Lleva por título la oportunidad de colaboración entre operadores de telecomunicaciones y empresas de Internet. Correrá a cargo de Mike Blanche, que es jefe de Relaciones Estratégicas en Google, y su tarea consiste precisamente en establecer líneas de cooperación estratégicas con operadores, fabricantes y otras organizaciones del sector, con el objetivo de establecer en esas líneas de cooperación proyectos que generen valor para todos ellos, también para los usuarios, operadores de Internet, operadores de red y usuarios. Mike, thank you very much. Gracias. Uh, buenos días. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mike. Uh, I work for Google in our partnerships team, working on partnerships with telecoms operators. And uh, thank you for having me today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm based in London, so the, uh, so the weather outside makes me feel at home. So thank you for, thank you for bringing the weather. Uh, so for the next 20 minutes or so, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about the Internet and how it has transformed the way that we live and we work and we learn. Um, and to talk about the landscape of today's digital environment and how I believe that we can make great positive strides working together to overcome challenges and to maximize opportunities. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. These were the first words spoken by Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, on the 10th of March, 1876. He was speaking to his assistant in the next room. Bell was a man of vision. He, uh, he wrote to his father, imagining a time when friends would talk to each other without leaving home. I wonder what Alexander Graham Bell would think if we brought him to the present day. Well, for a start, I think he wouldn't be saying, come here, I want to see you. He would be doing a video call or a Skype or a FaceTime or Google Duo on his, uh, on his smartphone. So that's one less problem. Today, a smartphone is, is more powerful than all the computers that NASA had for the Apollo moon landings. It's also more powerful than a Cray 2 supercomputer from the 1980s and uses a million times less power. I mean, the, po the point of all this is to say that disruption and innovation and transformation has always been with us. 20 years ago, almost, these two guys, um, my bosses, uh, hey, uh, were starting up Google in a garage in, uh, in, in San Silicon Valley. This was a time when, when internet access was uh, over dial-up connections and from desktop computers. Yahoo was the most valuable internet brand and Netscape was the most popular browser. From the start, uh, these guys had an audacious mission. It was to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. Today, Google believes that the promise of the digital economy is for everyone, and that is carried on in our, in our mission today. Ultimately, we believe that if we focus on the user, everything else will follow. We believe that greater digital capabilities will help everyone take advantage of the opportunity of the new digital world. This is why Google has committed to train 2 million people in Europe in digital skills and 10 million people in Africa. Google, in the 20 years we've been operating, has faced a number of uh, challenges and transformations. Um, the transition from desktop to mobile. When we started, these, that, that was how you accessed the internet. Um, today, obviously, it doesn't look very much like that for most people. And there's another fundamental change happening now, which is affecting us all, but more on that later. So Google is a technology company, but uh, we don't operate in isolation in the ecosystem. We depend on many other companies, on telecoms companies to provide access to users, on handset manufacturers who build uh, devices for users, for other companies who produce content and services 
that all help the internet ecosystem grow and flourish. We help and complement each other's businesses. We, we need each other in order for the internet sector to grow and thrive. Without us working together, users will be left looking at blank screens. We don't believe that it's a zero-sum game. We believe that by working together in partnership, we can grow the ecosystem together. So let's have a look at some of the examples of how we see this happening. So in the telecom sector, we see three different ways that we can work together. And I, th I think this can also apply to a number of other sectors as well. In core business development, this is growing the core business of the, uh, of the telecoms operator, um, helping to sell more access, more broadband services, more data. In enhancing technology and operations, helping to make the business more efficient, to save money, and new business opportunities growing into new areas, using the strengths that organizations have to, and the low barriers to entry that exist in the internet to grow new businesses in new areas. So let's dig into some of those a little bit. First of all, core business development. And the, the first thing here to say is that there is a virtuous circle between content providers, companies like Google, and access providers, telecoms companies that provide the access to users. The demand for content drives demand for higher bandwidth connections, which also then drives demand for more content, and it's this virtuous circle. 69% of users would upgrade their broadband connection if they thought it would get them faster YouTube. Google is working on new services such as 4K YouTube videos, 8K YouTube videos, which I don't think there are any laptops or computers that can play today, but we have it anyway, 360-degree uh, videos, 4K 360-degree degree videos. So the, by uh, producing this new content, it helps drive demand for higher speed broadband services. Spain has one of the highest rates of fiber broadband of anywhere in Europe, in, in Europe. and I believe this is because the, of the virtuous circle between content and access. In the US, there's a very strong correlation between if you have a Netflix subscription and if you have a high speed broadband connection. Correlation is not causation, but there is definitely something going on there. In enhancing technology and operations, there's many ways that we can work together with industry. On developing software-defined networking and network virtualization technologies for telecoms companies, internet companies can use the innovation that they've done in developing their own systems and networks. This is a picture of a Google data center to help in make a telecoms network more efficient. Groups like the Open Networking Foundation, which was founded together by Google, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Deutsche Telekom, Verizon, and, and others as well, all work together on this. Internet companies also invest in infrastructure including submarine fiber optic cables, like in the middle here. In the past three years, they have invested over $100 billion in infrastructure, and in, on some submarine cable routes, internet companies are now the largest single investors in capacity. And finally, in innovation with, for example, Project Loon, this is... Uh, balloons that fly high in the stratosphere, twice as high as aeroplanes fly, and they have a 4G mobile phone base station attached to the bottom, beaming down internet access. This is a project that was started by, by Google uh, five or six years ago, and we have been partnering with Telefonica in Peru to bring uh, internet access and mobile coverage to re remote rural areas where it would not be economic to build coverage normally. In the recent floods in Peru, we were able to switch on this service and provide it um, in, a, in, a, in a way that we'd never done before, to provide coverage when the traditional base stations were, were knocked out of action by the, uh, by the floods. 
And finally, new business opportunities. Telecoms operators and other businesses have many strengths that sometimes they, they don't realize um, as, as to ways that they can help expand into, into new business areas. For a telecoms operator, everyone thinks about the network, about the infrastructure as, a, as, a, as an advantage, but there are many others as well. There's the relationship with the customer. There's the billing relationship with the customer. You know their, their, their bank details. You can take payment from them every month. You have uh, engineers and a field force who go out to people's houses and are trusted to go into people's homes to install and manage and fix equipment. And there is a local retail presence on every main street interacting with your customers. So there's many ways that this can be used to help develop the business. For example, through carrier billing, which is when a telecoms operator provides uh, the billing capability for content and internet companies like Google to charge users for, for content, for apps, for services on their, on, their, on their mobile phone bill. We have over 100 telecoms operator partners for this in, in Europe. For RCS, which is on the left here, which is the successor to SMS, this enables rich communication and new B2B to B to C models where companies can interact with their customers more efficiently through telecoms operator partnerships. And using those engineers that go out to people's houses, you can install and manage smart home equipment like a Google Nest, manage the relationship, manage the uh, equipment, and charge the user for the service. So we believe that these opportunities are worth a lot. And so we asked Analysis Mason, a consulting company, to try and quantify this for us. And their, res their research and their report, which is at the bottom, which you can download, found that by telecoms companies and internet companies working more closely together, this could result in, ad in an additional 15 billion euros in cash flow for telecoms operators in 2021, which is a 50% increase on today. There's a lot of detail there on some of the areas that that could happen in, but uh, I'd encourage you to go and read the report. We've also recently launched a website which has more details about the way that Google works with telecoms operators in the wider ecosystem, telecomsconnect.withgoogle.com, and you're very welcome to go and look at that as well. So, what's next? What's coming? What's the next wave? What's the next big disruption? What's the big thing? What's on the horizon? And more importantly, how it, will it affect us? And how will it continue to transform the industry? So, Google Translate has been very useful for me here in, here in Spain because my language ability is very bad. Uh, I know this is Portuguese, but yeah, it's... Uh, We've been working to improve Google Translate using machine learning. And more generally, we believe that machine learning will be at the heart of many of our major breakthroughs in the near future. We believe it is as fundamental a shift as the transition from desktop to mobile. So I wanted to share with you some examples of how we think machine learning is, how machine learning is changing some of Google's products and how it can work with others in the industry as well. So previously, when Google Translate saw a sign like this, it translated it literally and with little context. So it just changed the words. It knew what the words meant in other languages, but it didn't really read very well as a sentence. Whereas by using machine learning, it's possible to understand the context of a sentence and to provide a more accurate translation. Let me show you another example that maybe makes more sense. So this is, uh, this is my Google Photos account. So I upload all my photos to Google Photos so I can search for them, uh, search through them easily. Uh, here I have searched for pictures of Mercedes cars. Um, and there's various pictures here of Mercedes. Apart from the one in the middle at the bottom, which doesn't look a lot like a Mercedes, it looks like um, a building. What's this one? 
This is the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, which is on Rodeo Drive in, in Los Angeles. I was there a few years ago, I think. Uh, not staying, I was just walking past. Uh, <coughs> and this is the on the bottom left-hand side are some of the, the, the confidence levels that the Google machine learning vision algorithm has as to what this picture is. How does it know this? How does it work this out? Well, we have uh, a lot of street view imagery from the cars that drive around the streets, and by feeding that imagery into a machine learning algorithm, the machine learning algorithm can learn to recognize certain things, such as buildings, landmarks, and more specifically, the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, which it thinks this is a 76% chance, uh, chance of being. And this list is very long, because we're only down to tree here, it goes a lot further down. Further down the list is the word Mercedes. Now, where's the Mercedes in here? Hmm. Uh, there's the Mercedes. So I wouldn't have found this image myself, ever, but through Google's machine learning technologies, it was able to find it for me. And these technologies are not just available to Google, they're, they're available to anyone. Through our cloud platform, we have vision APIs, we have translate APIs, we have uh, speech to text APIs, and these are available to anybody to build uh, new services based on machine learning. Any company can use, have the power of the same technology and algorithms that Google has to build their service. So how could this apply to, to, to the telecoms industry, the industry that I work with? Well, then let's go back to those three areas that I was talking about earlier. So in core business development, how about if we used machine learning to more accurately ident segment customers and to identify which customers were going to churn, which were, going, were about to leave your network and go to a competitor? If we could more accurately identify them, maybe we could offer them a new service that was would persuade them to stay. In enhanced technology and operations, there are many ways that we could help make telecoms networks more efficient. So on the, in, at Google recently, we used a machine learning algorithm uh, in our data centers, this is one of the Google data centers, to help improve the cooling. And this cooling, which is already one of the best in the industry, one of the most, most efficient in the industry, we put the machine learning algorithm on it, and it got a saving of 40% on the energy use compared to what we had before. Now, if you applied that across many industries, many areas, a saving of 40% is significant. And in new business opportunities, there's many ways that by building new services and platforms based on machine learning technologies, this can generate new revenue streams and new businesses. So just to close, I'd just like to say that thank you for having me, and this is why we do what we do for the user. We believe that an ecosystem that is built together is a better ecosystem for everyone. Our futures are more and more entangled. We're not a lone force. We depend on each other. The black and white days of us and them are gone. Google wants to ride the new wave of machine learning and the opportunities that come with that, working together with other companies. And if we all focus on the user, everything else will follow. Thank you.